Hello and welcome to another Prof or Painter Airsoft video. Today we're looking at the AGM Mossberg 500 full stock single shot shotgun. And we're going to be turning it from something that looks like this into something that looks more like this. So buckle up bitches and let's get cracking. So firstly a little bit about the gun itself. So as I said before it's the AGM M500 um, single shot shotgun. Comes in two varieties, one with a full stock, one with a pistol grip. It is the cheapest of the cheap airsoft guns, shotguns you're going to buy. This one retails for less than £40 in the UK and you'll see why when you first open the box. As you can see here, it is almost entirely plastic. The only things that are really metal on it is the heat shroud up front, the cocking arm, and, well, the screws. That's really about it. Everything else on it is plastic. The butt, the receiver, the lower shell tube, the outer barrel, the pump grip, everything else on it is plastic. But again, what do you expect for £40? But that being said, it does have some redeeming qualities. First of all, this one is chronoing at 338 out of the box on a 0.2 gram BB. I've chronoed it myself just before, uh, just after I opened it. Um, and secondly, it does have an adjustable hop. You can see the adjustable hop slider there sitting in what would normally be the ejection port. Um, and I've used one of these in the past, and they're actually surprisingly good. They're very, very easy to cock. I mean really, really easy to cock. Um, they're reasonably quiet and like I say they have adjustable hop these things will throw a BB out you know surprisingly well they use a small internal 15 shot magazine that looks a little bit like a VSR mag but it is a bit smaller it's this semi translucent cheap plastic the same that you get on the, like the pistol speed holders as I say it holds 15 rounds um, the magazines are about three pounds each so you can stock up on them it comes out like a VSR push the button pull it in pull it out again so like I say super super cheap now one of the problems with this shotgun is the look as you can see here it has screw holes all over the damn thing again you know what do you expect for 40 pounds but it has got screws everywhere and they look absolutely horrific it really does spoil the look of it it's handy in that you can take the gun apart should you need to but again if you're you know if you're one of these people that wants a good looking gun it kind of does spoil it a little bit so the first thing is to try and do something about that now of course I could just get some filler whip it over these holes sand it back and all the holes would disappear problem of course then is that if I ever need to get inside the gun to do anything tinker play around with it fix broken parts it makes life very very difficult so for a workaround we're going to use a little bit of plasticine that's right, I said plasticine. Now obviously plasticine isn't going to go hard, you can't sand it, you can't skim it back at all. It, you are literally using it just to plug the holes. If it gets prodded it will fall out again, but it covers the holes well enough so that when you put a lick of paint over it they do disappear somewhat. Like I've said continually, this is a cheapo shotgun, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, I'm not going to spend any money on it and very little effort. This is just to give it a better look at a glance. And again, it retains the ability for me to take it apart in the future should I need to. You can get in there with a toothpick, pick the plasticine out, still get to the screw heads. Obviously if you go in there with filler and start packing it full of filler, it makes it almost impossible to get the filler back out of those Phillips screw heads and it's sealed up for good. Now plasticine is oil based which means unless you are using oil based paints they are not going to stick to it. They will still sit on it quite well but if you wipe them with your thumb they'll come off very very easily. But again this is a cheapo shotgun, this is a cheapo workaround, I'm not trying to do this professionally. Um, it is just to make it look slightly better so if it looks like a bit of a hatchet job it is. But again like I say that's the whole point, it's a cheap shotgun with a cheap workaround. Uh, here we are with the screwdriver, just whipping off those bit, excess bits of plasticine, push it down into the holes, level it off with your thumb, and you can literally then just wipe it back off again. It's pretty straightforward. So once all the holes have been filled with plasticine, we're going to grab a bit of 800 wet and dry and just give the good, whole thing a good sanding down just to key the plastic up ready for paint. The next job once it's all been keyed up is just to grab some acetone and a bit of rag and just give it a good wipe down just to clean it up, remove any oil from it. Well, then we're going to go in with a much more aggressive sandpaper, this is an 80 grit, 
and we're just using this because we want to put a wood effect on the stock and the pump grip we're just using this sandpaper just to really put some nice scratches into it rather than paint the wood grain in which you can sit there for hours and hours painting in if we put some horizontal scratches into the plastic then the paint will sit in those scratches and it will give it and also make it feel more like wood it's a very very quick workaround compared to a beautiful wood paint job but I'm no artist and I'm no model maker in fact, I lie, I'm actually a model maker by trade, but I'm no artist. Um, so again, like I keep saying, I'm not looking to make the perfect finish on this. This is just something to make it look a bit more like the real thing. So the first paint to go on is just some water-based acrylic. This one is Crafter's Choice, which is just a cheap um, water-based dark brown paint. So we're gonna splooge a bit of that out and then use a brush just to paint the whole thing over. Again, we're going all over the stock, all over the pump grip, um, just to give it a initial coat of dark brown. I won't subject you to watching me paint the whole thing. I've only got this little brush and it's gonna take a while. So then here's the whole thing after painting. As you can see, we've done the pump grip and we've done the stock. Just gone over it, painted it brown, nice and simple. So once the wood parts are done, we're going to move on to the metal parts. We're going to use our 71072 gunmetal paint in our airbrush and just give all the remaining black parts a good going over with the gunmetal paint. We're not going to make it look absolutely perfect. We don't want it to look perfect. It needs to look real. So again, we put it on a little bit patchy, thicker in some places, thinner in others. As always, the light in my workshop isn't amazing. So once I've sprayed in each part, I'll take it outside and show it to you in the natural daylight. So you can't really see it going on with the airbrush. So that's now all had a coat of gunmetal. Let's have a look in the light. As you can see, it's got a sort of mottled appearance to it. Slightly shiny, still slightly black, which is what we want. We don't want it to look super, super shiny. Not yet anyway. It just wants to look a little bit more metallic than it did before. And if you've watched any of my previous videos about making things look metallic, you'll know that this is where we bring in the 71004 metallic blue. Same thing, this goes into the airbrush and we give this a light coating over the top of all the gunmetal parts just to give it that blued steel look. And again, I won't bore you by making you watch me spray the entire thing. It does take a few minutes and it isn't really a spectator sport. But here we are outside after having done the blue coat. And you can see now it's got a nice iridescent bluey look to it, which again is exactly what we want. It's designed to look like blued, that is to say oil heat tempered steel. So we're happy-ish with the metal parts for a minute, so we're just going to turn our attention back to the wood parts. And here we're just going to go in with a, a wood effect or a wood colour um, light wash with our brush. And we're just going to give the entire thing a good wash over. The idea being, you can see the yellowy colour to it there. The idea being this is that we're also going to sit down into those grooves, all those grooves we scratched in earlier. And then in a moment we're going to rub it back off again with the cloth and that will take most of that yellow back off. It'll also take some of the brown we put on earlier off as well because that paint hasn't actually dried in properly yet and it will give it something more resembling a wood finish. Getting a wood, getting a realistic wood finish that's going to pass close scrutiny isn't easy um, but like I say this is a quick and dirty job on a quick and dirty gun. And when that paint's on, we grab our dirty rag and we wipe it off in the same direction. We're following the wood grain, so we're trying to keep it strictly to horizontal wipes. Again, we don't want to wipe it vertically because that's going to leave uh, the wrong pattern in the paintwork. We want to keep it running to which, which way the grain would be running in the wood, which is obviously horizontal. So as you can see here, we're actually rubbing almost all of that yellow back off again. Um, again, I'll show you to you outside so you get a better idea of the finish.
So let's go back outside in the daylight. I'm looking at the wood, if I can get the camera in the right place. You can barely see the lighter colour there. Again, some of these things don't come out very well in camera. And especially on the forward grip, it doesn't even look like I've done it. But I can assure you it's there. You can see it in the stippling and the grip there. We're actually going to get rid of that layer because it doesn't quite look right. But it has got a slightly lighter tone to the wood, which is what we want. Okay, and with that uh, wood now painted in, we're going to load up our airbrush, airbrush even with some black. And if you watch the AK video, you'll know that what we want to do here with the black is just really get it into those areas where the wood meets the metal. Because again, this is where it gets very grimy. You're going to get carbon in there, you're going to get oil in there, all sorts of crap. Especially where your hands go as well, obviously they're going to be dirty. So we go in all around the stippling and all around the butt pad on the underside of this grip. All those areas where it naturally get dirty, that's where we're going to give it a zapper black. As always. You can't really see much because my hand's in the way. It's very, very difficult to film and paint at the same time. And we do exactly the same on the pump grip up at the front. Just some straight black in the airbrush. We're going to go in on both ends of the grip. And we're also going to make sure we get into all those nice grooves on it as well, because again, that's going to pick up dirt in there very, very naturally. Now, you don't necessarily have to do this with an airbrush. You could do this with just, you know, paint on a brush and rub it in. Use a rag to wipe it on and wipe it back off again. Again, I'm just using an airbrush because I have one, and it's just a little bit quicker, cleaner, and more convenient. The next job then after the woodwork is to use the um, silver with the dry brush technique just to go over all those nice raised areas. If you use too much paint on the brush, that's not a good thing. You can see me here, I've actually, I'm actually using too much and I'm just wiping it back off again with a finger. We're going over all the edges, all those raised areas where it weather and wear naturally. As always, this is a very time consuming process because you can only use a very, very small amount of paint on your brush at one time, or it's going to end up looking like you've just painted it silver, which isn't the look you want. If it looks like paint, you're doing it wrong. So this, like I say, very, very time consuming. You can see I'm using way too much paint on here. I'm trying to get it to come out on camera and I end up wiping almost all of it back off again. But you get the idea. You can see here I've done a bit of the receiver. You can see the silvery marks up at the front on the tops where we're just going over those high areas with a very, very light coating of silver just to make it look like it's metal underneath the bluing. Again, use a tiny, tiny amount of paint on the brush. Make sure you wipe most of it off. You just want the slightest hint of it on there. And then the last job for me, because I felt it looked a little bit dark in places, just to load up the airbrush with that gunmetal silver, silver again and just start going over the metal parts just to really make it look battered and worn. On the end of the barrel, obviously, it's going to get very, very hot, so the bluing is going to come off on there. So we do that nice and light, run the holes on the heat shroud, where the receiver meets the barrel, all those parts. And there we go, that is it. The finished article in all its glory. And as always, thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it, hopefully you learned something. If you fancy giving one of your own guns a go, why not? What's the worst that can happen?